guys, welcome back to the channel. If you've been thinking about getting into long range FPV or flying drones in some type of long range format, you've probably been to Best Buy or you've been trying to buy something from DJI that will go miles and miles. And a lot of you guys, the first thing you ask me for years now is how far can it go? Um, it, that depends. That depends on a few different things. Your battery, what type of power system you have on there, it depends on the type of receiver and the type of module that you have plugged into the back of your JR module bay. Now we'll get more into that a little bit later. I don't want to just glaze your eyes over and give you all the tech specs up at front. Um, I want to let you into our secret club because years ago, if you wanted to fly long range, what you had to do was you had to kind of know like a select group of guys in town or near you. And sometimes a lot of you guys live somewhere where there's just other guys that don't fly. So you had to figure all this stuff out by yourself. You had to go on Facebook, you had to look on the forums, you had to find a special group for long range. They are out there and sometimes it's just kind of hard to get help over the internet. So uh, with this video today, I, I'm happy to announce that, yeah, it's easier in 2021 to fly long range. My recommendation for you guys is gonna to be to get some type of seven inch bind and fly. There are two types of batteries that we fly. We fly the Lion style packs from 4SP to up to 6S versions of these Lion packs. Those will allow you to get close to 40 to 45 minute flight times, depending on the type of motors that are on the seven inch rig you're flying. Now, uh, years ago also to get into the secret club, you probably had to, you know, you had to build your own. And then the hardest part about seven inch class FPV drones is that you, you have to tune it and it's kind of hard to tune seven inch, just about every, build out there with the stock Betaflight tune on there, it's going to give you jello. And 6 and 7 inch are, can be beasts to be able to PID tune. So most of you guys aren't PID tuning from custom PIDs. Um, you're borrowing PIDs from other people across the internet for 7 inch and another type of flight controller. So um, yeah, that's, that's one of the other things. So the next thing is being able to add GPS to it. You had to wire all that stuff up. Now you don't need to. Everything is already wired up for you on the Recon 7 and it's set up. And what I recommend doing your first day out is go find yourself a really big field. Flying long range is all about location. Get away from people, get in your car, go way out into the country somewhere where you know it's uh, just very unpopulated. Do your GPS return to home test first before you test it on switch way out, miles out, down some railroad tracks or in a canyon somewhere. Um, the other big thing about it is, is that when you're flying long range, this is a good tip for all you guys, you go higher as you go. That's one of the main rules of long range FPV. You go higher as you go. If you get above 400 feet, you're probably breaking the regulations. Um, so uh, with that said, the reason that you want to go higher as you go is that your signal needs to have a clear line of sight between you and the radio. As odd as it seems, Crossfire can really get into up into some canyons and be able to uh, skirt through some kind of dense trees in even the thickest Oregon forest. But the thing is, is that eventually you're going to lose signal some point in your long range flying. So um, if you have GPS on there, the fail safe kicks into GPS. You gotta have beta flight set up to fail safe to GPS because that will level the quad out and then you'll start rising up. And I don't know how many times I've had that type of thing save me just flying down a canyon or riverbed. So um, otherwise, it would fail safe right into the water. Um, and that's how beta flights normally set up. It's set up to drop. So change it to return to home, GPS, assisted. Make sure that your arrow loads on the home point. And once you have about 10 satellites, you can generally take off. So let's go ahead and check out the Recon 7 now, guys. Uh, just a little bit of advice for you if you're just thinking about getting into long range. You can fly Lion packs or LiPos. So... If we're looking at a LiPo on this one, I would suggest somewhere around a 6S 3000 milliamp battery. It's going to get you an upwards of 20 minutes flight time on this quad or the Lion 4SP 6000. Yeah, you can do 4SP on this quad. 1250 kV motors, super low kV, one of the lowest ones out there, even in comparison to the GEP RC Crocodile 7. That's one of my favorite ones of all time and the Chimera 7 from iFlight. So, um, three of those quads out there now that are buying and fly seven inch which will also carry GoPro. So get out there, do some filming, have some long range fun and uh, see what kind of beautiful, beautiful 
most epic cinematic video that you can get with a seven inch. Let's go ahead and do a little testing. No GoPro today, straight FPV camera because I want you guys to see the two. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Here we go.
All right, guys, welcome to my secret lair. That's right, my secret lair. This is the Recon 7. It is built for long range FPV, and you can get this one in two ways. You can get an analog version. The analog version, you guys, is actually pretty cheap. It's 339, and that is PNP. &P. That's without a receiver. If you want to add Crossfire to it, you can do that. And what's super cool is you can get this one from the factory with Crossfire Diversity. It has a nano receiver on here, so there's an antenna up front on the vertical, and then there is one in the back laterally across the quad. So you have the ultimate reception back to your crossfire module. Now this one is not set up for um, tracer. It doesn't look like they have a version for tracer. You could add a tracer receiver on there if you want. Um, those are nice, but I think it's a pretty decent price at $339 for the analog version. I mean, this is a big quad. We're talking about a Bind and Fly 7 inch here. This is no $300 five inch quad. This is like a pretty good value. So um, if you want the, the full blown DJI digital, if you're that guy, that one's gonna cost you 550 bucks. Long period of silence. Yeah, I know, um, $500. Not everybody's gonna go out and spend 550 on a Bind and Fly. However, <laughs> it's gonna, serve you better than something like the DJI FPV drone. And yeah, by the time you add a GoPro on there, you're gonna be up to a thousand dollars and it's gonna be around the same cost. However, this is superior to the DJI FPV drone. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It is superior. Hands down, all the guys in the FPV community, that are pretty hardcore long range FPV guys. Most of them are flying this. They might own an FPV drone from DJI just for funsies, but this is where they get serious and the cool thing about this one is that it has a pretty good receiver on here um, it has that tbs crossfire nano diversity receiver like i mentioned it also has the capability to do two different types of batteries you can do lion packs this is my 4sp uh, 18650 7000 milliamp battery that's going to get me an upward past 30 minute flight time and i can get 20 minutes out of like 6s 1800 pack back there um, if you want to go like 6s 3000 milliamp you can also do that too and that will get you up in the 25 minute range that's what i would probably go for um, if i were you so tbs crossfire full blown module or the new tracer that's the way to go with this setup um, absolutely hands down that's my biggest recommendation for you guys and fly lion on here because they built this power system with 2806 motors 2806.5 1250 KV. 1250 KV is lower than the GEP RC Crocodile 7. I don't think they had 1250 on there. So I think this is the lowest KV motor and one of the larger motors out there. So they went bigger, but they went lower on the KV. So that lets us have a little more power when you want it and have a nice, smooth, low amp draw motor. And that's what you're looking for in long range. One of the goals of long range when you're flying long range is to find that lowest stick position that you possibly can to keep the nose up, say 40% or 35% throttle. If you can achieve that with a seven inch, you're doing really well. Now I also gotta give a head nod to Dave C FPD for this design. This is his design frame and it is looking pretty sexy because we almost have a straight, just a little bit of bend in those front arms forward, not much. I can just barely see the props in the side view. Um, yeah, I think if they were straight across in the front, you can see how they bend forward just a tiny little bit. Um, that would probably get these props out of view. I mean, just barely in the FPV camera view, but most of you guys are recording with GoPros and you will absolutely not see 
the props in the GoPro view. So put a GoPro on there, put the Insta 361R on there, um, do some 360 videos with it. Either way you want to go, you're going to have fun with that. And you can make some seriously cool cinema type videos. So um, also, you know, again, this is a seven inch frame. It's a 324 millimeter wheelbase from motor to motor. Uh, it does have a three to six S LiPo. I don't know why you'd ever run a three on here, but you can do 4S, 5S, and 6S. So you have a pretty good range of batteries. Yes, you can fly 4S on these motors. Um, you're just gonna have way lower throttle at the high end of the throttle. So it's gonna feel less punchy than on 6S. 6S is gonna feel great. If you're gonna freestyle this, I don't know why you would, but you could do that on a LiPo. And I would not ever, never, never, never try to freestyle with a Lion pack like back there. So, um, uh, I think that one's the one to fly on there. The 7,000 milliamp, if you can find the 6S version of that pack from Zod, that's the one to get. I'll link some batteries down below for you guys for Lion packs. Um, these are cruisers, they're not freestylers. I mean, if you're freestyling a seven inch, I'd love to see your videos, send them to me, you're a crazy man. So um, 800 milliwatt Zeus VTX in the very back. It's also big enough for the Cadax back there. You can add a Cadax if you want to. And it also has an upgraded GPS unit in the very back. And I was getting around 10 satellites with this GPS unit. It's larger than some of the other ones out there. This is an M80 Pro GPS, by the way. So. Uh, five volt power supply, it's 25 by 25 millimeters back here. It has a TPU mount in the back with the Mortal T back here. It also has two extra post holes if you want to add anything extra back here. We've got a long range antenna, which is a super tall one. And that's what we're looking for. This looks like the right hand circular polarized hammer antenna that I've seen. This is a hammer micro. And notice that we have a traditional long body bed on here. And the reason that you have long body bed is for that extra big battery. Most of these guys out there are running 3000 milliamp and above. Um, I've even run like a 4S 5000 pack on something like this. And even though it's kind of a big, heavy, bulky battery, I'm still able to squeeze out 20 minutes flight time out of that type of battery. Um, and that's good. And the other thing this quad also has is it has an external beeper. So if this crashes down the road somewhere, down a farm road, and the battery flies off this baby, you will be able to hear this buzzer beeping. It will chirp for about two days. It has an external battery hooked up to it. So that's kind of nice that they have that on there. Um, and that's a Soder FB drone buzzer that's on this one. So it also has in the box folding props from Dow, which is kind of cool. There are three blade folding props. I put the traditional props on here. These are seven by fours. It has kind of a wide cord, probably a little wider than I want, but um, if I could find a little thinner, lower profile cord prop, I would probably run that like seven by threes or something like that. You don't need a real aggressive thick pitch or cord on these props um, for long range. And even a bi-blade prop is probably gonna get you a little better flight time than having a tri-blade prop on here. So that's one thing to think about too. Um, and we also have on here an F722 flight controller from uh, the HDLRC, which is the Zeus flight controller. That one is a good one, 48 amp BL Heli S four in one ESCs and, and they're running these motors. Um, so I think overall we have a, a great release and I think it's a great competitor to the GEF RC Crocodile 7, which is my favorite of all time. Also the light version of the Crocodile 7 came out, but this one is turning heads and I've been wanting HDLRC slash Recon FPD to come out with a seven inch since they have released the three inch, the four inch, the five inch. I mean, we've had long range quads in every single size from Recon FPV. Yeah, the six is really good. If you wanna grab a six, grab a six. I'll link that one down below. But I, what I would suggest, get the seven. Tell me about it later. You're gonna love it. Um, this is two thumbs up for me and I've been waiting for this for quite a long time. This is like serious, serious cinder rig. This is a mountain surfer that you can trust and that you not likely to have to go walk and hike in and pick up if you crash um, because this has GPS on it. Set up your GPS return to home, field test it first before you go out and try not to hit anything when you're flying miles out. Um, keep it high and, and keep a line of sight between you and your transmitter and everything should be good. If not, um, you had probably some kind of component failure and that's sad for you, but it does happen. So. Thanks again for watching my channel, guys. Um, make sure you comment and subscribe 
then send me an email on dronecamps.com on the contact page if you want to get entered to win the Femi Mini X8. That's coming up really soon. Maybe even in a couple days we're going to give that one away. And then we're going to announce the next giveaway for October. So uh, yeah, dudes, give me a like if you like this video and you enjoy Drone Camps and the channel. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see you on the next one. Peace out.